Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Process Pro Gang and the Hub. You're here with me, Ant Haynes, to speak about the Kipping Handstand Push-Up. Now, with all this skill development work that we have on this platform, of course, we do have some prerequisites that we first got to clear before we start practicing these higher end skill movements. So with something like the Kipping Handstand Push-Up, first thing we need to think about is, can you support yourself in a back-to-wall handstand? Really, we should be looking at 30 seconds plus of a back-to-wall handstand, shoulders stacked on, on top of the wrist, feet together, using the wall for your support. The next thing we gotta look at is, do you have the prerequisite control to lower at least five seconds down eccentrically to a flat surface? Once you have those two prerequisites, we then believe you do have the strength ability to start learning the kipping handstand push-up. Now, when we teach the kipping handstand push-up, You'll see in the videos that we use today that I'm doing it all to a flat surface. Of course, you can use all of these drills that we got here with an ab mat set underneath your head. You can have plates to bring it up a little bit higher. Don't expect to just get the first movement straight away. So it's not the kipping hands and push up unless you're really strong and you understand movement well, it might not happen that first try. So give, to give yourself uh, a bit of a regression in terms of where we're starting rather than going all the way to the floor maybe have a couple of ab mats underneath your head just to give you a bit of help but like we said the prerequisite should be there 30 seconds plus back to wall handstand hold and at least a five second eccentric lowering down to a flat surface so the first drill we're going to work on is the most simple first thing is i'm going to set my hands on the floor and i don't forget within the sport of crossfit Generally, there have been some different rules with this movement in particular with the kipping and the strict handstand push-up. But generally, there's a 36 by 24 inch box that's set on the floor, which your hands have to stay inside. Now you can see what I'm basically doing here is I'm placing my hands first, then kicking up to the wall. Now this is the most basic. This is just getting us comfortable kicking up to the wall. Don't forget when we use these skills after practicing them in isolation, we will start to take them into a mixed modal setting or a fatigue based setting. So we've got to be comfortable getting upside down pretty quickly, pretty kind of mindlessly. So the first thing we're going to practice is literally place the hands on the floor, kick up to the wall, hold, kick off the wall, repeat. We're going to look to do this with our hands set on the floor in the same position. That's just gonna help drill in exactly where the hand should be. In terms of your hand position, I want the hands slightly turned out rather than fingers facing directly forward, just a slight turn out. And you'll notice that the elbow stays locked the whole time. The next drill we go into is exactly the same, but rather than setting the hands on the floor, I'm gonna start standing tall and walk into it or kick into it rather than setting the hands and then going up. As I step forward, the hands go down and up. Obviously, this is a progression forward, from what we just did there, because this is just gonna make it a little bit quicker to walk towards a wall and kick upside down. Again, a really, really simple skill piece that a lot of people do take for granted. And if it's something that you're not good at, it is definitely something that we would prescribe to people just to get better at kicking up to the handstand. It's gonna save you time in a workout scenario. It's just gonna save you a lot of effort as well, having to bend over, place hands on the floor and then kick up. Rather, you just walk towards the wall, straight upside down and off you go. The next drill we're gonna work on is kicking up to the wall, lowering our head down to the floor, pushing the butt against the wall, bringing the knees towards the chest, holding, and then kicking off the wall. Now again, this is just something we like to teach. We always go through the cueing of head to floor, butt to wall, knees to chest, go. And when I say go, that would be when you would execute the kipping handstand pusher. Of course, we're gonna break it down, and we wanna actually just work on the first three cues, which is head to floor, butt to wall, knees to chest, hold it, and then we're gonna kick off the wall, rinse and repeat. Again, try and dial these movements in, these cues in under zero fatigue, really understand them, and then once you've got a better understanding of it, then we can look to start to execute the movement. So you'll see, I kick up to the wall, steady myself, head lowers down to the floor, butt to the wall, knees come to the chest, hold, and kick off the wall. Now you'll notice, when the head touches the floor, so once I've kicked up, the head comes down. You'll notice there is a slight tripod position on the floor. We do not want to see your head in line with the hands. That tripod position will allow you in the future to make more of a resting position when that head's on the floor. And of course, as you get more efficient down the line, you'll spend less and less time with the head actually in contact with the floor. 
You'll see I just changed the view of the camera here. So you can see exactly where the knees come to. So head, butt to the wall, knees to the chest, kick off. You see the knees are splayed apart, not together. If the knees are together, it might just start to pull you off the wall. The knees are a bit more apart, it allows for a bit more of a vertical movement in your kip later on. Next thing we're gonna look at, pretty simple. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're just gonna execute one kipping handstand push-up at a time. Now a kipping handstand push-up, of course you're inverted. And when you're inverted, everything just seems like it doesn't make sense. All I want you to think about is either a push press or a thruster, whichever movement you like more. No one really likes thrusters, so it's probably gonna be a push press. So what we're thinking is that the legs and hips want to do as much work as possible before the arms come through and finish. But just like a push press and a thruster, we really want to try and relax the shoulders as much as possible while maintaining anywhere between like 5 to 15% of tension through that bar. It's the same here when you're inverted, 5 to 10 to 15% tension with your hands on the floor. As soon as your legs and hips start to extend, then your arms will press into the floor and finish off that kipping handstand push-up. So if we play it a few, a few times, kick up, head to the floor, butt, knees, go, kick off the wall. Rinse and repeat. Kick back up again, kick up, head to the floor, butt to the wall, knees to the chest, go. You'll notice when we kick up out of that handstand push-up, we're actually trying to think about heels reaching up towards the sky. Don't try and search your heels towards a wall or else you're gonna hit the wall early and end up dragging yourself up the wall, which is just way too much friction and it's gonna become really hard after that. The next thing we look at is actually linking reps together. Of course, only look to link reps together once you have a single rep down packed and it is flush and it's smooth and it looks good. Once we start to link reps, all we're looking for is exactly the same thing. The only difference is you're not kicking off the wall. Stabilize it at the top, head to floor, butt to wall, knees to chest, go. Head to floor, butt to wall, knees to chest, go. Once you're done, kick off. Again, just like you would with kipping pull-ups, muscle-ups, toes to bar, choose rep ranges which allow for high quality movement. Don't just get really excited, nail your first one and try to do then a set of five. Nail singles, once singles are done, nail doubles. Once doubles are done, triples, quads, five, six, sevens, eights, go on from there. Build quality first, don't worry about adding fatigue yet. Nail them at a flat surface, then go from there. Last video you can see, this is more a competitive style kipping handstand push-up. You'll notice that the knees don't come anywhere near as deep, and this is only once again you become a bit more efficient at the movement. So the knees won't come as deep, and also I'm spending way less time on the floor. It's a really fast cycle time. Everything else remains the same. I'm still using the same cues, head to floor, butt to wall, knees and go, but everything just sped up. So once you play it through, arms are locked, head, butt, knees, go, head, butt, knees, go, head, butt, knees, go, and it's nice and quick and it's just efficient. And again, over time, you will get better and better and better at the movement, you'll understand it more, and you'll be able to refine the kip a little bit more. Just like the butterfly, we don't need a huge movement, maybe you need a huge movement to understand to start the movement, and as you get more efficient, as you get better, and as you get stronger at the movement, you start to tighten it all up. When you can tighten up, you then become more efficient, you can breathe easier, you apply less tension to the movement, and hopefully within this sport of CrossFit, you then become more successful in a competition, online qualifiers, so on and so forth. As always, practice these movements by single reps to start in isolation with zero to no fatigue. As you get better, start to introduce more reps, start to introduce a bit of fatigue, then take it to a mixed modal setting. We hope these help you. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.